hey y'all welcome back to my channel it's a girl saturn today i'm bringing you a video of the beauty standards from different countries around the world i'll be reacting to that because just because like i just wanted to see and i'm like if i'm gonna see this for the very first time might as well i do a reaction to it so if you're new here please subscribe if you're looking for a music reaction take a right and go visit my other channel sassy ren reacts i only do music reactions over there but on this channel i do multiple reaction from just everything just everything i'll be reacting to everything here if you have any suggestion on anything you like to see me do a reaction on let me know down below in the comment section i'll be more than happy to do it for you let's check out what their beauty standards are in different parts of the world oh and thank you to the person that compiled this clip together all the links will be in the description box down below yeah so let's get into it hello everyone beauty standards have changed many times throughout human history what was considered perfect for example in the middle ages today looks rather strange however few people think that even in the 21st century the ideas of what is beautiful can be very different depending on the country in today's video we'll tell you about the standards and ideas of beauty in different cultures some may seem a little unusual to you while others will really surprise you let's get it on Japan. In Western countries, a perfect smile is associated with the symmetry of the shape of the teeth and their uniform position to the jaw. To achieve this effect, people put on braces and use them stubbornly for years to fix the smile and make it perfect. But in Japan, the situation is very different. They have a concept known as yeba. It means uneven teeth, in particular protruding upper canines. And the Japanese consider such a smile to be very cute. Yes, according to the inhabitants of the land of the rising sun, a yeba smile adds a new touch to a person's appearance and makes it more unusual. It can be said that crooked teeth are something of a cute tiny mole, which only emphasizes beauty and adds charm. One of the reasons for the popularity of Yeba is that in Japan they appreciate natural beauty and don't consider it necessary to correct in any way what nature has given you. However, it's only upper canines and front teeth that are charming for the Japanese. If the smile looks uneven due to the fact that the teeth grow at an incorrect angle and affect the profile, then people will certainly try to correct this problem. By the way, the Japanese prefer to wear braces on the inside so as to not show others that they're working on their smile. Iran According to statistics, Iran has the highest percentage of nose surgeries in the world. This is partly due to the country's traditions, which demand that women only show their faces. Of course, they want their faces to be perfect, and even with the high cost of plastic surgery, about $2,500, that doesn't stop anyone. But it's not just about pursuing beauty. For Iranian women, and sometimes men, a nose job is also an indicator of wealth and social status. Surgery is so desirable that many patients wear bandages long after full recovery. Yeah, just to show that they've already undergone the procedure and have been able to afford such a significant expense. And some even wear fake bandages. That is, they stick a bandage on their nose, even though they haven't undergone surgery. So everyone thinks that... Yo, that's humorous. Can just imagine putting on a bandage on your nose just to fake it? Hey, that's a true definition of faking it till they make it. Just because of social standards, you're going to do that? Does work on your nose? Hey, man, you can't knock anybody's culture, though. If they believe that this is beauty... They're going to do it, right? So the bandage hides the work of a plastic surgeon worth several thousand dollars. Tajikistan. Since ancient Rome and Greece, having a unibrow was praised by poets and thinkers. It was believed that a woman with such a characteristic was unusually beautiful and desired by all men. That was a long, long time ago. But if broad, dark eyebrows became fashionable all over the world only a few years ago, then in Tajikistan, thick eyebrows and even eyebrows that have merged above the bridge of the nose have long been considered the standard of beauty. Only a few generations ago, there was even an omen. The smaller the distance between a girl's eyebrows, the closer her
her husband would be to her. And in some parts of Tajikistan, even today, unibrows are considered a sign of beauty. If nature hasn't given a woman bushy eyebrows, she paints them on herself to look prettier for the opposite sex. Moreover, locals are convinced that unibrows are a symbol of luck and longevity. Among women, moreover, it's synonymous with purity and innocence, and is a symbol of vitality among men. In general, dense unibrows symbolize all the good things that you can imagine. All for me that like shaving my eyebrows. I would even stand a chance. I wouldn't stand a chance at all. Like, they'd be like, no, love don't live there. South Korea. In South Korea, plastic surgery is not only widespread, it's also considered an absolutely normal thing. In larger cities, you can find surgical-related billboards and clinics that promise to make anyone beautiful. According to statistics, one in five female Seoul residents between the ages of 19 and 49 at least once was under a surgeon's scalpel. And this isn't even surprising, because South Korea has quite strict beauty standards. The most important of these is the shape of the face. The face of a a really beautiful Korean woman must resemble a heart, a wide upper part, and a narrow chin. To achieve a perfect appearance, many Koreans undergo complex surgeries over and over again, and it must be said that such operations often include fractures of the jaw, removal of its parts, and other frightening procedures. Of course, the rehabilitation period is not very pleasant either, because the patient can't eat solid food for a long time. But what can you do? Beauty, as they say, requires sacrifice. Papua New Guinea. <laughs> In Papua New Guinea, as well as in some African countries, there's an ancient tradition of scarring the body. Scars are often applied to men during the initiation rituals of warriors, and among women, these patterns are proof of their extraordinary beauty. A future warrior does not cry either during such a procedure, and the woman doesn't show her tears either, as her family happiness and ability to marry depend on the scars. Each drawing on the body is different. It has its own meaning and purpose too. Some of the scars can even be considered a kind of passport. By looking at these drawings, one can determine a person's age and position in society. For example, in the Gaanda tribe of Nigeria, girls get their first scars at the age of five. The patterns are applied first on the stomach, and after a while on the waist, hips, forearms, and forehead. Therefore, the different stages of life are marked before the girl gets married. And in the Bata Mariba tribe, children are scarred so that the tribal spirits protect them. It's worth saying that this is always a very painful process, which can also cause various diseases. Do you see how beauty standards around the world really varies from faking your know, faking appearance or just working on your face, breaking job or not being able to eat to putting scars all over your body? I understand that yeah is probably cultural for them, but that painful that must be painful. They can't even cry. Like, no cry at the age of five. Oh my gosh. I remember when I was five and I was getting popped. And that used to hurt. So just imagine like cuts just for, I don't know. That, that's all different though. That's something else. Let's continue. In many countries, it's common to think that the thinner a girl is, the more attractive she is. However, this is not the case in Mauritania, where it's believed that a woman's beauty lies in her wide body. Cultural stereotypes have forced women to prepare for their future from childhood. They follow a certain diet or take special medications that allow them to gain weight. Young women do this because the extra pounds make them more attractive to men and more valuable in society. Sometimes girls are even sent to some sort of summer camp where they're forced fed in a special way eating 16,000 calories a day. Oh love, am I living in the right place or do I need to take a trip over to Martinia? Should I go? What y'all think? Because girl over here thick like dumpling. Yeah. So should I take a trip over there? I might have to take a trip over there. You know? Day. Although the tradition has begun to disappear in urban areas, many still follow it in rural areas. In addition, the only study conducted in Mauritania's Ministry of Social Policy, Family and Children revealed that 55% of men considered women's thinness to be a serious disadvantage. 60% of women believe that considerable weight is an advantage. On average, two out of five women openly stated that fat women receive more attention from men than thin women. China 
In many Asian countries, including China and Thailand, pale skin is considered a true beauty standard. And this isn't a new trend. Even in ancient Chinese literature, a beautiful person is described as fair-skinned. If you visit a local store looking for face cream, you'll hardly find any that don't contain all kinds of whitening agents. By the way, men's aftershave products are no exception. Many residents of Asian countries refuse to appear on beaches without special masks so as to not tan accidentally. They are willing to do almost anything to protect their skin. But what's the reason? Skin color in Asia is directly related to social class. If the skin is dark, then the person works in the fields and therefore is poor. Of course, in a society where people want to be rich, nobody wants to look like a peasant. Some hide under umbrellas. And on sunny days, residents of big cities try to leave their house less often. Myanmar. In the highlands of Southeast Asia in Myanmar, the interesting Padong people live, enjoying great attention among tourists. The thing is that Padong girls wear brass coils around their necks from the age of five. First, a six-ring spiral is worn around the neck, and then the number of rings increases by one each year. At the time of marriage, the number of rings reaches its maximum, and after the wedding, as a rule, no more rings are added. The woman's neck is therefore stretched, which sometimes results in an increase in length of up to 40 centimeters. Sometimes the construction is so high and uncomfortable that it's difficult for girls to even turn their heads. The custom of wearing rings is associated with the specific ideas of the Padong tribe of beauty. The long neck here is considered a symbol of well-being and beauty. In addition, this design protects local women from tigers and avoids confusion. The fact is that in this region, the theft of girls by neighboring tribes and unauthorized escapes happened a lot. Therefore, the Padong invented this original way of protecting their women from dangers and neighbors. Whoa, that one is something else. So like, if they take the rings off, like, how oh, does it work for your neck? Like, probably I could probably do with two rings around my neck. What do you think? That's not my culture, though, but that's, that's something else, yeah? If you don't want too many rings, hey, you end up getting married early. Is that the case? Namibia. Himba is the name of an ancient African nomadic tribe. Their lives have remained virtually unchanged over the centuries, despite wars, civilization, and droughts. Nomads live in Namibia, and their exact number is quite difficult to calculate. The Himba have almost no water, too. Every drop they can extract will be carefully preserved and consumed. Don't even ask us about how they bathe. The Himba's survival depends on a magical ointment, to which they owe their famous red skin tone, a mixture of butter derived from the milk of their cows, and a variety of herbal elixirs as well as bright red volcanic pumice powder. Himba women spread this product all over their body and hair several times a day. The ointment helps maintain the necessary level of hygiene, protects against sunburn and insect bites. It also makes the skin incredibly soft, red and beautiful. New Zealand The indigenous people of New Zealand, the Maori, were the main population of that country before the arrival of the Europeans. One of the distinguishing features of the Maori is their tattoos. While in today's world, tattoos are used to decorate the body, for the Maori, it's also a kind of ID card. A tattoo on a Maori body can tell the entire lineage of its bearer and even carry a secret message to the rest of the world. These drawings also serve as part of the initiation ritual. <laughs> For example, Maori women traditionally tattoo themselves on the chin during adolescence. Surprisingly, Maori don't have two identical tattoos. Each one of them is unique. The drawing is always very complex and detailed to demonstrate both the skill and talent of the artist and the beauty of the tribe's culture. So that flip was taken from the mind where also that's the name of the channel. The link would be in the description box down below. So you can go over and check it out for yourself. If you want to see me do more reaction on videos like these, let me know down below. These are some very interesting things that I learned today. I'm sure that my daughter is going to be more than happy to watch this one and just learn something new about the Maori people though. To say that the tattoos are different, like all the tattoos are different, that is quite interesting. Does having something unique to you. So I guess a tattoo would be like a fingerprint. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. I sure did because I learned. I learned from it. I hope you learned something from it too. And uh, yeah, 
some of them though i don't think i would ever want to practice them to be honest no i wouldn't want to be so but it's not a part of my culture so it's up to them to do it if they want hey what else can i say i hope you enjoyed this reaction it's a girl sassy let's keep it classy until next time i'll catch you in another video bye